1984, nós tínhamos aqui um garoto franzino, super dedicado, e onde tudo começou foi exatamente aqui. Ele fazendo aqui 10 voltas com muita dificuldade. E, e hoje a gente tem um atleta que percorre aqui 40, 50 voltas de uma maneira é, inaudita. É nesse lugar que ele é, alongava a, a parte das pernas, colocando para fazer, fazer o alongamento. Enfim, ele se soltava a musculatura para estar mais apto para o trabalho. Aí ele vinha nesse ponto, e nesse ponto aqui, ele iniciava o trabalho. Ele fazia 40, 50 voltas nesse circuito de 400 metros. E me impressionava que, muitas vezes, em 40 voltas, ele tinha 33 a 34, com o mesmo tempo, no segundo. E eu anotava e não acreditava, porque era simplesmente fantástico o seu ritmo. E cada dia ele tinha que vencer de alguma forma. Era veemente a vida dentro dele. Ele tinha que se bater. Ou era décimo de segundo, que ele diminuía o tempo, ou era a frequência cardíaca que abaixava durante o esforço, ou então a recuperação do esforço que se fazia mais marcante. Ele nunca ultrapassava os seus limites, mas estava sempre como que empurrando constantemente os seus limites. Nessa luta incansável, nessa pista, aonde ele mesmo falava que já tinha gastado dezenas e dezenas de solado de tênis. This pair of tennis shoes have done probably they are only about over two months old. Almost finished. A lot of running. I've been doing, I've been doing 12, 15, 20 kilometers a day. Not only for my profession is important, but also for my health. It's a responsibility I have even if I am on holiday, that I must keep very much under control because uh, it will make a difference when I go back to the racing car, to the tracks and testing or racing. Uh, I'll be in a better shape, I'll drive better. Uh, eu vou performar melhor. I have experienced a lot of pain while I was driving already, many times. I remember the go-kart. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an accident, a very bad one, although it looks like I wasn't hurt. I was badly hurt inside, you know, a lot of pain. And I didn't think I could drive the following day when it was the event, the race. And once I sat in the go-kart and they push start me. Uh, I realized that going slow, I had all kinds of pains and I couldn't really drive. But then trying a little hard and driving fast, the pain was somewhere else, I don't know where, mm -hmm. but uh, somewhere else, not in my body. Even I had two accidents during the, the race itself where If I was already hurt, it meant it would be really painful. I was so into it that I didn't feel any pain. I even stand out of the go-kart, push, start again, jump in it and continue without feeling any pain. So things that you experience and you learn by doing it, how strong your mind can be and what influence can have on your body. Nós é, reservávamos esse local mais longe 
para fazermos nosso trabalho de meditação e relaxamento. Nós colocávamos ele numa toalha e ali fazíamos trabalho de respiração, diafragmáticas, para ele relaxar, se soltar e entrar em meditação, abaixar a frequência cerebral. E lá é que nós fazíamos o trabalho de mentalização e programação mental. Se programando, uh, I think from it, then you can get a lot of energy. Even if you go through pain, sometimes you can cope with the pain. If you are well prepared, if you are well focused. I have won races with a lot of pain, yet I wasn't driving my best. But because you commit yourself to such a level where there is no compromise, you give during the, the whole race and with the difficulties, I couldn't really let much of... I had uh, something was requiring much more effort in my arms to control the car. And seven laps from the end, I lost all the gears. I only had six. It was the only gear I could get. It. So it was a tremendous pain by the last few laps. But uh, the desire to win was so big that I kept going. It was a race full of memories, full of excitement, and uh, uh, it's something that you you gotta keep in your mind for the rest of your life, for sure. One of my best moments from my whole career is the first victory in Formula 1. Again, Portugal in the rain, bad conditions. I have done the first pole position of my career and in Formula 1 and also the first victory. Together with the first championship, uh, it's one of the best, if not the best moment of my whole career so far. Relaxed, he was at ease, and then we had this terrible weather. And I would have thought that most racing drivers could have been completely phased by having got to the point where the promise might have been aborted by these terrible conditions. And so my, my lasting memory is that it did not phase him at all. All he wanted to do was to talk about how to set the car up for the wet, how to get the best out of it in the wet, how to get the engine running so that it was as smooth and responsive as it could be in the wet. And he went out there and he just blew everybody else away. It was one of the motor races of all time, not for closeness of competition, exactly the reverse, but anyone who stood there that day and saw him drive away from a field of some of the most fierce competitors that Formula One has seen, it cannot fail to have been impressed. There's a lovely story which also gives an insight into his character. At one moment, he got it wrong. He hadn't made a mistake the whole race, and he got it wrong. And he was off on the grass, and the car came sort of sideways, and then it squirted back to the tarmac, and with a flick of the steering wheel, it was straight and off down the road. And Jenks went up to him afterwards, and he said, my God, he said, that was unbelievable car control. Uh, you know, that was really special. 
And Ayrton said, don't you believe it, I just lost it. How it came back, I don't know. And I thought that, if nothing else, that demonstrated the honesty of the guy. And I think that characterised all his career. foi considerado o rei da chuva, mas poucas pessoas sabem que para ele ter conseguido isso, se tornar tão bom na chuva, além do talento e da capacidade que ele tinha, esse manejo que ele tinha sobre a relação tempo e espaço, ele teve que se esforçar, ele teve que treinar muito para conseguir transformar esse talento numa coisa que ele tinha domínio. E ele ficou muito bravo com isso, ele ficou louco da vida que ele tinha perdido a corrida por causa da chuva. E o que aconteceu foi que cada vez que chovia, cada vez que começava a pingar, ele pegava o kart e ficava treinando até escurecer, até não ter mais luz. E ele treinava, treinava, treinava debaixo da chuva, ele chegava molhado em casa, é, até que ele conseguiu é, manejar o carro na chuva. Being wet, it's always a tremendous risk to lose the car control or somebody lose the car control and you get involved into an accident. But um, uh, making moves, I rather you know, decide the strategy myself if I can and establish my own pace in the race. when we have the Ford engine and uh, he still won five races against cars that had more power and, uh, and they were more competitive than us. Uh, I think that was probably was one of the best years of his life, even if he didn't was world champion, because he really showed the world what he can do. The one that comes to mind to me immediately, with, without that, would be Donington. I think on those first two laps, he won the race then and psyched the opposition in a form that they would everybody destroyed. There was just there was no race any, any, anymore. No, that was fantastic. be very sharp all the time to understand the situations as they present to you and not be hesitating and I was sharp at that occasion in particular that occasion and I took uh, <coughs> all the decisions like that uh, in the right way and you know with a precise measure and uh, everything came together uh, and that was from the green light basically
I don't know how many times we stopped for tyres. I think it's surely the record in any race of pit stops. Uh, driving with slicks in damp and really slippery conditions was was tremendous, tremendous effort because uh, you just don't get the feeling from the car and you have to commit yourself to certain corners and and you just can be off. So I had to gamble on this. It paid off and uh, of course I'm over the moon. Thank you to everyone and uh, thank you. And that is a heavy situation, heavy position to be, a lot of weight on your shoulders. But on the other hand, if you look on the positive side, it's position to be because we offer you all of that. When I win a race or when I am on pole and establish a quick lap, I try to pass to them the feelings that I'm going through in order that they can feel part of it. They are part of it and they must feel part of it because the hours that the mechanics engineers put behind to prepare a racing machine to us, many times going through the night, no holidays through 12 months a year, can only be motivated, can only be justified if they get the trio or some of the trio that I get. The only way I can see is by sharing with them those feelings. Ayrton foi uh, um herói, foi um ídolo, foi uma pessoa que levantou a autoestima do Brasil. Eu acho que ele respondia a, a um fluido, a uma energia que partia do país para ele. Era o povo brasileiro, não é nem o Brasil, não é o governante, era esse povo brasileiro que ele respondia com aquela bandeira. E que foi muito importante até para o Brasil, porque esse homem faz aquilo que o brasileiro gosta muito de dizer. O mundo se curva ante o Brasil. É um clichê do Brasil, é um lugar comum que a gente usa. E realmente o mundo se curvava diante do Ayrton Senna. Quer dizer, ele era um homem imbatível, ele era um homem calculista, ele era um homem determinado, ele era um homem ambicioso e ele era principalmente um homem vitorioso. Ou seja, ele era tudo aquilo que a gente queria ser. Ele devolveu essa estima, ele devolveu esse orgulho brasileiro e ele, ele se tornou esse ídolo. Feliz Natal! Feliz Ano Novo! Feliz 90! Any sportsman, anybody that is successful, attract people all the time. It's, it's natural that people follow you and like you, you know, the television is showing us all over the world and that alone makes you popular. No Japão, no, no, na entrada do autódromo, ficava uma quantidade, uma multidão de jovens e era tanta gente que a polícia formava um caminho naquela multidão que era justamente para as pessoas poderem passar. Mas aquela multidão era tão grande que aquele canal, que, aquele caminho que se formava com, com, com a polícia ia estreitando, estreitando de ver uh, aquela, aquela multidão e ele feliz, ele feliz de, de poder estar ali no meio, de poder ver dividir aquele sentimento com a com o japonês. Então é, é uma é uma coisa que é, vai ficar na minha memória é, para o resto da minha vida. É um é um sentimento de você poder presenciar aquela troca, não é, intensa de carinho. And you cannot move around. You simply cannot turn around sometimes. You cannot look around because 
you are just surrounded and that is not so good sometimes. Success brings that. If you're not successful, you wouldn't have that. So you wouldn't be doing good, you wouldn't be doing right. That's why I say it's part of it. And you have to learn how to cope with these situations. Brazil has lots of problems, lots of difficulties, but uh, I try to look the good things that Brazil also has got. And this is one of the good things, you know, it's a paradise. It's a place where you can have peace, you can be close to the nature, you can enjoy life when you have holiday time. You have a beautiful sea, you have beautiful vegetation, uh, climate, sun, very good things which you can just let it happen and enjoy life and it's it's a place where I recharge my batteries to go back to the racing car once you experience that it's difficult to live without it you kind of need it it's a, a way of finding your equilibrium so whenever it's possible to be away from big seats I like to I like to be in a close to the nature, be in the seaside or in the countryside. There were originally two lakes. This one was the higher one. Um, and we decided to join them. And we made one big lake, which is over one kilometer long. The water is a natural water, it's spring water. There is no outside water, it's completely clean. And we also are planning to put some fish here uh, to then be able to also to fish a little bit and have a fresh fish. We decided to build those those houses for the workers. And so we have built so far about 10 houses and the people who then work for us can have a good way of life. Uh, and also uh, it's it's nice to see new things done properly with the right shape, right design, right style. We are also making uh, the main house for us. We've been working here for a year and a half already and I believe we have another two years to go. Um, everything is facing uh, the two lakes. Uh, so all the time our view will be the two lakes, we have a tennis court right in front, the swimming pool, we have the boathouse there on the left, and, uh, and we try to preserve the, the, the trees that were here from the beginning, to have um, the atmosphere, the environment as untouchable as possible. So it's going to be nice when it's finished. be my new office and the top of it is especially being built for a helicopter we have three levels of the building just for my our activities a marca Sena ela é uma marca registrada no mundo inteiro ela deve assinar produtos da melhor qualidade possível que tragam inovações tecnológicas que acrescentem algo para o mercado ela não é uma marca que simplesmente é, aplica uma etiqueta no produto. Não, o consumidor vai encontrar em cada produto com a marca Sena realmente algo com uma individualidade e uma diferença. Ah, o slogan da marca é Driven to Perfection, quer dizer, a busca da perfeição 
existe em qualquer produto. Não estava preocupado com o volume de vendas inicialmente, com a quantidade de, de, de produto que ia ser colocado no mercado. Ele queria primeiro saber o produto, a qualidade desse produto e como ele, ele chegaria ao consumidor. Toda semana nós recebíamos uma quantidade enorme de propostas, as mais variadas possíveis, propostas de negócio. E naturalmente nós é, fazíamos uma seleção e ele naturalmente é, dava a palavra final. E nós é, se falávamos praticamente uma hora todo dia. Quando terminava os treinos ele ligava da pista ou quando chegava no hotel... Uh, normalmente se falávamos uma hora para que a gente pudesse atualizá-lo do que estava acontecendo e ele tinha grande interesse em tudo o que acontecia, quer dizer, ele era uma, como empresário também um, uma pessoa muito ativa. Esse garoto tem futuro, hein? E começa agora. Acelera a ceninha. Espera aí, prenda a cadeira, não, ceninha. Ah, o amor do Ayrton pelas crianças era uma coisa. Era uma coisa fantástica. O. O Ayrton tinha o sonho de fazer um trabalho para crianças, mas ele não sabia exatamente o que fazer. E nós conseguimos trazer uma coisa para ele que era aquilo que ele queria. É que o problema de educação no Brasil é um problema sério. Hum. E o Seninha, o conceito Seninha, ele, ele diz respeito à educação. Em tudo que o Seninha está, ele está ensinando alguma coisa. A gente utiliza um esquema de Fórmula 1 para abrir um leque e fazer histórias universais, onde você pode usar temas universais, onde você pode usar uh, conflitos cotidianos, uma criança que tenha problema na escola, que tenha problema com os pais. A coisa principal que o Ayrton queria passar uh, através do Seninha era a vida saudável, né, que, que diz respeito a, ao esporte, a, a se alimentar bem e a cuidar do corpo. Né? E... Ele queria passar também o conceito de família, né, que para ele a família dele sempre esteve em primeiro lugar. Nós, nós já sabíamos dessa preocupação dele, porque era uma preocupação nossa também. O Ayrton cresceu com um, uma pessoa de grande caráter uh, e sempre valorizou a, a honestidade, o trabalho e a justiça. Ele era uma pessoa muito justa. Uh, com todos que estavam perto dele. Então, uh, sempre sensível, uh, não só uh, aos que estavam próximos dele, ao, aos problemas e aos sentimentos daqueles que estavam próximos a ele, mas também era muito preocupado com, com os problemas sociais, com, com a pobreza, com, com crianças que eram carentes, então ele sempre foi uma, assim, uma pessoa muito sensível nisso daí. E esses valores é, foi o seu Milton e a dona Neide que é, realmente colocaram isso nele desde pequeno. Oi. <risos> You got him. Yeah, we got him. I think I am very fortunate because um, my father and mother gave me the fundamental feelings that uh, I have until today. Uh, together with that, of course, um, I have a, a wonderful sister and a very special brother. And um, we always live very close together. Always doing things together, always thinking as a group, as a whole, always being positive about things. We always had a healthy life, we always had um, anything we want in life. Um, so in that aspect, I think I had, um, I'm a fortune guy.
a família era a coisa mais importante para ele. Uh, ele sempre foi ligado à família desde pequeno. Uh, ele foi embora para a Europa para correr na Fórmula 1, mas ele sempre continuou ligado à família, sempre uh, estando lá, ligava todo dia para contar o que estava acontecendo lá, para saber o que estava acontecendo aqui. Mesmo estando fora uh, do Brasil, ele, ele mantinha esse relacionamento estreito. Eu acho que o momento certo